first of all, just invite questions of clarification. In other words, not points of argument or points of debate, but is there anything about either of the two presentations that was not clear? Um, when you raise your question, please just introduce yourself and then secondly, just say who the question is for. Okay, you're from University of Oxford, based in Bangkok. Uh, just to clarify, are you talking to the speaker from uh, Uganda? Are you talking about only remnant samples, so not samples collected purposefully for, for the storage and for future use? Just to clarify before. We are focusing on, I guess, both, if I get you proper, pro properly. It's both the remnant samples and also those for research. Thank you. Questions of clarification in the front? Uh, thanks, I'm Sofia Salas from Santiago, Chile. And my question is for Dr. Tai from Taiwan. Uh, can you explain us how was the informed consent process obtained? Was it broad, tire, specific? Well, uh, consent is a must anyway. We don't use broad consent at all in Taiwan. If there's some relevant uh, before tissue sample has been taken, you know, there's a questionnaire asking you know, the, the donor if he or she will agree you know, for future research subject to the approval of IRB, you see. So we don't, we don't give any broad consent. And then we will say, okay, the research will be you know, uh, related to the original you know, protocol. Otherwise, you know, needs to go through IRB from the very beginning again. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Naomi from Mahidol Oxford Research Unit, and my question is for Dr. Tai. So did you monitor what the samples were used for and what sort of output came out of the work, and if so, how did you do it? The monitor of the samples? Do you monitor how they used? Yes, the right, okay. Uh, okay, <clears throat> if it were, when a, researcher request for the sample and approved and given, you know, every six months or maybe once a year, we have a team visit, you know, to that, you know, a specific researcher or his or her station to find out how he's doing. If he or she is following the ethical guideline published, you know, and regulated by the government, we do, you know, uh, visitation. At the back, go ahead. Hello, Kelvin from Singapore. Thank you very much for the presentation. Just, uh, just to clarify, in terms of uh, for, for Michael, uh, the Taiwan Biobank does it include indigenous populations? Because I understand well, that in um, Taiwan, there's specific laws governing these populations yes. and also specific provisions on benefit sharing. Uh, so, so, sorry, and uh, also for the question for Helen, I'm wondering whether the, um, in in terms of putting together this arrangement, uh, is there a particular legislative framework in place, uh, or are you just essentially working with? SOPs. Thanks very much. Mark. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the very important question we ask about indigenous people. You know, Taiwan, just like any other place of the world, we do have indigenous, you know, uh, native anyway. In our, you know, regulation, you know, uh, unless a group consent or tribal consent is given, you know, nobody can extract any tissue from indigenous people, you know, to protect you know, their community and their tribal uniqueness. You see, that is a bylaw anyway. So right now, you know, almost all researchers avoid, you know, uh, doing research using, you know, Aboriginal, uh, Aboriginals, you know, you know, involving, you know, them anyway. So in order to protect them, you know, because uh, they protested. They say, well, you take sample from us and you are going to label us that we are, you know, we're subject to drink, you know, we're a drunker or whatever, you see. So they say, well, unless our group consent, you cannot come to do any study on us. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Yes, there is a, a, a governance framework at institutional level. There is the Bioposary Governance Committee, which is a, a little bit multidisciplinary. And uh, there is also a, a access control subcommittee which has the technical group and the data access subcommittee and biosecurity subcommittee. Yes. 
does that answer your question? Uh, I think, it, is there a national regulatory framework in place? No. Yeah. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, just to s help answer that question. Yeah. Uh, in the front. Sorry, just hold on a sec. There you go. Yeah, what, what's outstanding is uh, national regulations on biobanking. Uh, the regulations are mainly focused on clinical trials and samples generated from clinical trials that are, are stored. But there's no... Um, a, um, a general regulation on, on biobanking. And I think that's one of the, what came out from the stakeholders meeting. And uh, Uganda National Council of Science and Technology is tasked to develop these uh, guidelines okay. and make sure that, yeah, all biobanks are regulated. Thank you very much. So we're under some pressure to close the plenary. There's one more, two questions, and then we break into the small groups at the back. And then... Uh, Manjulika from Bengaluru. Uh, this is for Dr. Tai. Just wanted to know the 31 sub biobanks that you spoke about, are they private? Um, and how do they interact with the National Biobank? Are there any public private uh, issues that you face? Okay, you know, your, your question is okay, the private the biobanks and what, yeah, are some of them private or? You said or they were 30. Oh, oh, yeah, private. yeah, yeah. Well, one, you know, uh, national. national, you know, Taiwan Biobank is funded by the government, and that is public. Anyway, you know, use tax, taxpayers' money. The rest 31, you know, the rest 30 biobanks are private, either established by hospital or by, you know, uh, some pharmaceutical companies. Anyway, so one is funded by the government. The rest, they have to raise their own money. Oh, okay, we, we, we do have regulation, very detailed regulation available, and they have to follow regulation. If, you know, a pharmaceutical company or hospital like to establish by bank, they have to apply, you know, to the Ministry of Health and Welfare, and then go through, you know, uh, examination and uh, interviews, and eventually some permission will be granted, but some will, de will be denied, yeah. It's been controlled by the government, you know, even the primary right. They cannot just go ahead and establish one. No, no way, yeah. Thank you, thanks. Uh, last uh, question. Uh, Ahmed Samir, NCI Egypt. I have a question for Dr. Tai. Uh, you said that you are planning in the next phase to do genetic research on your sample. So do you have facilities in Taiwan for that? Uh, and if not, uh, you are going to collaborate with other countries. So how would you predict, uh, we are talking about equity, so how you would protect your intellectual right, uh, uh, patent, uh, patent, something like this? Are you, do you have regulation for this, lady? Okay. So as I heard it, um, are some of the research group requests for genetic research? Right. Um, and how do you regulate those? Yeah, uh, do you have the facilities? And if not, you, you are going to collaborate with other countries. So how do you protect your, your own rights on this research? Well, we do have, you know, uh, researchers, you know, uh, apply for sample uh, to see our genetic heredity, you know, of course, you see, but, you know, that has to go through scientific review and also IRB and also EGC, you see, you know, that has been, you know, uh, sort of, you know, safe, kept, you know, very, you know. Well, all this research in, in Taiwan, you don't? Uh, in uh, Taiwan, okay. You and don't then, you know, some researcher will cooperate with, you know, uh, like you know, United States, you know, is you know, uh, corporate corporation. Anyway, none of the sample tissue sample can be exported overseas unless approved by the government. So you know, the researcher will have to apply to the government, you know, the Ministry of Health and and Social Welfare. Say you know, I cooperate with you know so and so research <coughs> in other countries, and uh, they have to explain why this is needed. You know, for you know, exporting. And, and, and if any results come out of this research, how do you protect your rights? I, I mean, the local researchers, the local biobank, you know, when it's exported outside, sometimes you get, uh, they get a patent or something like this. You have a regulation to protect the rights of local researchers? So are the rights of the biobank protected when the samples go out of the country? Well, uh, 
So far, we haven't had that happen yet. Usually, you know, they will analyze and then give the detailed information, and that is shipped to you know other countries anyway. So no, you know, no fresh sample tissue has been exported. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your attention, and I'd like to thank uh, Helen and Michael for two stimulating presentations.